Did you know that your immune response to foods could be totally different if the food is cooked or if it's raw? So one of the things that you understand is that food proteins can change their structure when they're heated and cooked. So your immune response to foods really depends upon uh, the amino acid sequence and how the structure of the amino acid is as it exposes itself to immune cells. So research has found that food proteins actually change their structure and their antigenicity or how they react to foods, whether they're in a cooked or raw state. Did you know that most laboratories, when they do food sensitivity testing, are only measuring foods in a raw condition, so it may not even apply to whether you're actually having a reaction to those foods or not? Did you know that food coloring can actually make foods much more reactive than bef before the food coloring is added to the food protein? So one thing you have to understand is when you get exposed to food that you're sensitive to is that food protein is only reactive when it's in a peptide state. And what your body does, it takes digestive enzymes and breaks those food proteins down into individual amino acids. And when food proteins break down to amino acids, they're no longer reactive. Your immune system doesn't have the ability to respond against them. Now, what happens with food coloring is food coloring prevents proteins from being broken down so they continue to stimulate and, and cause the immune system to react. So if you have a food protein that you're sensitive to and there's food, food coloring added to it, it can be much, much more reactive for you and it can, the reactions can last much, much longer. Did you know that when foods are combined together during the cooking process, that those food proteins can then change and become a completely new trigger for food sensitivity? And the model of evaluating food sensitivities, we like to do a food, food sensitivity profile and look for individual foods and see what a person reacts to and eliminate those foods. But science has shown in a real life setting, when foods are actually combined together, they changes the protein structure. Some of these food protein structures bind together and become new antigens. So it's very possible that you may have a reaction to a certain combination of food proteins put together and that individual markers in a laboratory test may not actually give you the real cause of your immunological triggers related to food. My name is a common thing that people react to is MSG. You know, some people get exposed to MSG when they eat Chinese food or if they eat top ramen or foods that are loaded with these chemicals to enhance, enhance the flavor and taste. Now, the reactions to MSG are not really food sensitivities. The reactions to MSG are really neurologic. And MSG is really uh, what's classified as an excitotoxic compound. It allows neurons to come close to a threshold, which allows you to taste things better. But for people that have some degree of neurodegeneration or injury to the brain, MSG she can cause a whole list of diverse symptoms based on what area of the brain is starting to degenerate. So if you have injury to the back of your brain called the cerebellum, you may get exposed to MSG and you may get dizziness or vertigo uh, and so forth for different regions of the brain. My name is Dr. Tish Krasian. I'm a researcher, clinician, educator, and author. This is one of the concepts that I'm teaching in my upcoming course, Food Sensitivity Solving the Puzzle. To learn more, click on the link below.